This week, we are continuing our study of two-point perspective by drawing some architecture. You're going to need a pencil, an eraser, and some sort of straight edge. I have a ruler, but if you don't, use the side of a folder, use the side of a notebook, anything with a straight edge will work. The first thing always with two-point perspective is drawing our vanishing points, and I want them to be on either side of my paper, really close to the edges, and about the same distance from the bottom of the page on both sides. So I use my ruler to measure, but it's approximate. It doesn't need to be perfect. And then, as always, starting with our vertical line, this is where the corner of my building will be, and then connecting the top and bottom of that vertical back to the vanishing point on both sides. And this results in what's going to be the front corner of our building that's closest to us. I decided that I liked the angle when I flipped it. That's just a personal preference. And the next step is to decide how big is this building, and I'm drawing the back corners, which again, are more vertical lines. And I'll remind you, something that's really important with two-point perspective is thinking about, does this line need to be vertical, or does it go to my vanishing points? Here, this is something new that I didn't talk about last week. I'm making a triangular roof here, so I need to find the center of the building. So I crossed an X corner to corner. The center of the X is the center of the building, so I go straight up from there to find this point, which is going to be the top point of the triangle on the roof, and then I connect that down to the corners. I'll show that again if that was a little confusing. There's another side of the building when I do that too. And then I erased my extra lines, and right now I'm deciding, can I see the top of my roof? So I'm connecting the top point back to the opposite vanishing point. And I zoom in here, you can just see the tiniest little bit of the roof. And then I decided that my next step was going to be to add an L shape coming out on the other side. So I'm making another piece of the house that's popping out. So here's my corner, and then I'm connecting that corner to the opposite vanishing point to find that angle of where the house should be coming at. So there's the bottom, and then I'm doing the vertical for that corner, and then I find the top by choosing a point and then connecting to the vanishing point. And here my ruler's a little short, so I find the angle, and then I scoot my ruler up to finish the line. And this point in the project is where you get to really decide what the base of your building is going to look like. It is perfectly okay, and I would actually prefer it if you came up with your own design rather than just following along with what I'm making. So I decided that mine was going to be an L-shaped building, but you get to decide for yourself using the rules that we talked about last week and that we're reviewing this week, what kind of shape do you want your building to be? And this is the base that I decided on. And here, I'm showing you once again that triangle roof. So I'm connecting corner to corner on this side with an X and in the center of the X that's the center of the building using perspective and then I go straight up and find the top of the triangle and then connect the top of the triangle down to the corners and then I have to decide if there's part of the roof I can see so I connect the corner or not really the corner the point of the triangle to the opposite vanishing point connect back and that's how much of the roof is visible visible from the vanishing point. And right here is one of the, the few instances where I'm not using those rules and I'm just making up this little bit right here because this angle wouldn't really follow the rules of two-point perspective. Then erasing that X because I don't need it anymore. Here is the base of the house that I'm designing. And from this point, everything else I'm adding is details. So I'm looking at the base of the drawing and using that to inform the direction of the lines that I'm making. The first detail that I'm adding is this porch that's coming off the front and I'm using the wall it's extending off of to inform which vanishing point I should be connecting with. And it's also important to pay attention when you're making the back of shapes to the direction the front of the shape is pointing because the back is always going to be parallel with the front. So this is a good example of the back of the porch is connecting to the left side vanishing point and vertical because it's parallel with the front. And if that helps your brain, use it. If it's confusing, just follow the rules as you understand them. But I'm just using the rules that we've talked about to create a whole bunch of interesting detail for my architecture. 
So I'm adding some pillars and some railing to my porch that I made. And another thing that's important to know is that as details are getting further away, they're going to be getting smaller. So further away is closer to the vanishing point, and that's where the details are getting smaller as they're going towards. So the, the pillars that I created on my porch, if you notice, really they would all be the same size, but since we're using perspective, as it gets closer to the vanishing point and further from where I'm viewing it, it's getting smaller and smaller. The next detail that I'm going to be adding are stairs. This is something that can be intimidating, but you definitely can figure out. Just look at where you want them to be, and it's extending off that existing wall. So the top step is going to be going back to the vanishing point that the wall is going to, and then it's a vertical down. So it's vanishing point, vertical, vanishing point, vertical for the whole side of the staircase. And then they're extending back to the opposite vanishing point. So once I have the front of the staircase, the, the length of it is connecting to the other vanishing point. So you switch vanishing points and connect all the corners that you just made to the opposite vanishing point. So here's the length of my stairs connecting to the vanishing point from the corners that I just created. And then uh, after this, I'm erasing that little extra one that was actually a porch line because I don't need it. And then, again, something important to remember is that the front and back of the shape are always parallel. So the same vanishing point I used for the front, I'm using for the back. And it's vanishing point, vertical, vanishing point, vertical, all the way down just like we did in the front. So see, stairs can be intimidating, but it's just the rules that we've been talking about this whole time. Okay, and here, this is another scenario with this triangle. I'm not using the vanishing points, I'm just making up that angle. And there will be some instances where you need to do that, but for the most part, 95% of your drawing is going to follow the rules of either vanishing points or verticals. And here I'm choosing to add some windows to the top of my house, and it's, again, two verticals, and then I do the top and bottom with the vanishing points. But this arch is another example of me using the information I have to make an educated guess to the angle. So the, the arch is not going to follow the vanishing point rule because it's a curve. Okay, but there I have the windows, and on this side it was a lot easier to see, so I'm going to slow it down a little bit. So this is a good example of where things that really would be the same size look like they're getting smaller as they get closer to the vanishing point. I kept that rule in mind when I was deciding where to place these windows. And then again, I used the verticals for the sides and then the vanishing point for the top and bottom and made up the curve going along with uh, the angle that I thought would be appropriate according to what the IRD had drawn. Okay, and then just adding some detail of the window panes and I'm using the same vanishing point as that side of the building for this. So if you're ever unsure of which vanishing point to use, look at the side of the building you're on and it's going to most likely be that same vanishing point. Here I'm measuring out um, how big I want the siding to be. I used like one centimeter for each side just so it would be consistent and then connecting to the same vanishing point that that side is using. And then instead of measuring again, I just went from that same point but switched vanishing points because I'm switching sides. I did that for the whole siding and then the next detail I chose to include was the top part I made these little panels and I wanted them to be a little bit imperfect like it was like a handmade thing on a cottage so I didn't use my ruler I tried to make them a little bit imperfect and that's just a choice that I made for that detail and then I added a bush in this empty spot because I decided it needed a little something and then the last thing I decided to add was a sidewalk and it's extending off the same vanishing point that the stairs are so I just use that angle and then the chunks of sidewalk are receding back to the other vanishing point and that is pretty much all the detail I decided to add I did pop in a horizon line where the sky and the land are separating in the distance and then I decided to finish mine by tracing all the lines with the black marker you get to decide how yours is going to be finished, and I'm very excited to see what you all create. Remember that this is not a step-by-step -step tutorial. It's meant to be me 
explaining how I would complete this project. So yours really should look a little bit different than mine. Uh, you should be designing your own project, not just following what I do step for step. So as much as you can, uh, make your own choices here. And I'm, I'm really excited to see what you all come up with.